Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to take an aerial HDR panel like the one here and easily transform it into a gorgeous landscape scene. Using a drone can really help you get angles on subjects that you would never be able to otherwise. Furthermore, using HDR with aerial photos can help to even out your shadows and your highlights. I really like to make panoramas out of drone photos because it gives you an idea of scale and also allows you to create super large scenes from up above. For this video, I'm going to use some drone photos I took this past weekend around Detroit Lake, Oregon. So to get started creating our aerial HDR pano, we're going to start inside of Browse. And I've actually navigated to the folder containing all of my photos from that day. So I'm going to find my HDR exposures. And an easy way to keep track of exposure brackets is to create a subfolder for them. So I'm just going to grab all of my HDR exposures. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select add subfolder. Now if we just make sure we have move selected items to subfolder checked, and I can rename my subfolder, I'm going to name it drone pano. Now in my subfolder, I can find all of my HDR exposure brackets and they're easier to keep track of. I used an auto exposure bracketing on my drone of three. So I'm going to grab sets of photos and sets of three. There's 12 photos here, so I have four three-bracket exposures to grab and create styles for. Then I will compose them into a panorama once I've created a style for each photo. So for the first shot in the panorama, we are going to grab our first three exposures, and we're going to head over to the sidebar, and we're going to select HDR. In the HDR dialog here, this is where we're going to set our HDR look for our photos. I'm actually not going to mess with the tone and color options because we are going to create a style later, and then we can just add that style to all of our HDR exposures. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to change my base exposure. I want to change the base exposure because my HDR preview seems a little bit dark and I want it to be a little bit brighter. I'm going to do that by selecting this area here on my desired base photo, and once clicked, it will change to an aperture icon. And as you can see, the preview is updated with the exposure and made it a little bit brighter. So now what I want to do is I want to go in and I want to mess with the HDR look just a little bit so let's head into HDR look, and the only thing I want to do is I want to turn down the detail to zero. The detail is making this area where the sun is rising above the mountain kind of crunchy, and I don't like how that looks. That looks good like that. And now that our photo is all ready to be merged, let's go ahead and make sure our photo is going to open in Browse. And now we can hit Save. So it took us back into Browse, just like we selected, and if you scroll down in your folder, you'll see the HDR photo is right there. Now what we need to do is repeat this with the rest of our exposures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rest of my three bracketed shots and merge them together. It's important to use whatever settings you used on the first HDR photo for every photo in the series. This makes the image look more natural when it's merged into a pano. So I'm just going to grab each of my sets of photos here and I'm just going to repeat the same process we did before. I'm going to select the photos and I'm going to head over to HDR. And once I'm in the HDR dialog, I'm going to make sure that my base exposure is the last exposure in the series so that all of the photos come out a little bit brighter. I'm also going to make sure that my detail in my HDR look controls is set to zero. So now that I have all of my bracketed exposures merged into HDR, I can now make a style and apply it to all of them. So as you can see, I have all of my HDR photos here, and let's select the first one and head into develop. For the panel I'm creating, I want to give it sort of a darker look to emphasize the nice clouds we have here, but I also want to show some of the mountain detail, so let's turn down the exposure a bit. A pro tip with skies is to pull down the exposure slider to give some detail back into the clouds, and then once you have the detail you want, pull up on the shadows to reveal the darker parts of your photo. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Now what I want to do is I just want to crank down my contrast quite a bit, and what that's going to do is that's going to make my photo seem a little flat, but it's also going to up some of the shadowy areas in my photo. That looks a lot better like that. So last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up the photo a little. I'm going to turn up the temperature until it brings back some of the color in my sky and in my water. Okay, that looks good there. Now that we have our style created for the photos, let's go ahead and apply it to the rest of our HDR photos. Simply head down to your film strip view icon here. Pull up the HDR photos you have select the series of photos that you want to paste them onto and simply go to sync. Now all of your HDR photos have the same look and are ready to be merged into a pano. So to create a pano, we first have to be back in browse. 
And now that we're in Browse, we can select our series of photos and let's just head over to Pano and get started making our panorama photo. Once the Pano dialog pops up, you can adjust how you want to create your Pano. For this Pano, I'm going to select Auto. And more often than not, that is going to be using the spherical option. This means it's going to map your images together as if they were laid down inside of a sphere. This is going to work best for panoramas shot from a single point and captured by panning your camera across the scene. For my edges, I'm going to choose Warp to Fill. I think it looks a little bit more natural with Warp to Fill than it does with Crop, so let's leave it at Warp to Fill. With these edges controls, it's good to just play with them and see which one you like best. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my pano is opening up in develop so that we can get to work editing it right away. Everything else looks good, so let's go ahead and select save. So I have my pano here in develop ready to start editing. And the first thing I want to do now is I want to crop some of this area from the bottom of the photo that I don't need. Let's head over to the crop and I'm going to hold down shift. And if I just tighten up the frame here, I can get rid of some of that water in the bottom area. So now onto the fun stuff. Let's bring back that contrast I took out of the photos earlier and just crank up the contrast quite a bit to make our photo pop a bit more. Next thing I want to turn up are my shadows. So I'm going to turn them up, revealing just enough of the mountains to see some trees and some textures. Now for the exposure, I want to turn it down quite a bit to bring back some life into the sky. And let's also crank down the blacks a bit to bring back some detail into our photo. Okay, that looks good as far as our tone goes for the photo. Last thing in develop I want to do is I want to just turn up the temperature a bit to bring back some of that warm color in my photo. That looks good like that. And let's hit the backslash key to see our original photo. It's looking really good so far. Now let's take it into effects to add the finishing touches. Here in effects, the first thing I want to do is I want to bring back some of the detail in these mountains and this island here. So I'm going to go to add a filter and I'm going to select dynamic contrast. And I don't want the contrast to be applied to the entire photo. I only want it to be applied to the mountains and this island. So I'm going to go into my masking options and I'm going to select invert. That way the whole mask is concealed. Now what I can do is I can hit B on my keyboard if my masking brush isn't already selected. I'm going to make sure that paint in is selected. And now I can brush in the areas that I want to have contrast. I want just a little more contrast than that, but I don't want to crisp up this area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an HDR look filter. And I'm going to go to the drop down styles and I'm going to select exaggerated edges and tones. Exaggerated edges and tones is basically going to just up the clarity without having any compression or detail. So there's going to be some structure added, but it's not going to crunch up the photo like it would if you had a bunch of compression or detail in your HDR look. Just like the contrast though, I'm going to take that off of my sky by masking and brushing it out. Remember that in Photo Raw, all of these effects and adjustment layers are non-destructive, maskable, and re-editable at any time. So let's make sure we have our masking brush selected, and let's make sure we have it set to paint out. And in a few strokes, we have our HDR look out of our sky. And if you turn it on and off, you can tell that it really helps bring back some of the detail in the mountains and the island. So the next thing I want to deal with is this large area of water that seems to be a little distracting. So I'm going to go to add a filter. I'm going to add a vignette and let's select big softy. I like how that looks on my water, but I don't want any of that darkness on my sky. So what we can do now to remove this vignette from our sky is we can just grab the mask that we used earlier for our HDR look filter. We can simply go to copy, and if I head over to my vignette and go into masking settings, we can just paste that mask and instantly the vignette is off the sky. Copying and pasting masks is an easy and fast way to stack multiple filters on top of your photo. So let's hit backslash to see our original photo. And yeah, we've done a lot to this photo in not a lot of time. So we only have a few more things left and then we'll be done with our HDR panoramic photo. So next I'm going to add another adjustment layer and I'm going to make sure it's set to darken. And I'm actually going to go to my masking bug tool, which on this side is this little icon here, but you can also grab it by hitting M on your keyboard. So I'm going to grab that and I'm just going to drop it right above my mountains here. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to bring back some of the detail in my sky without crunching it up. And I can also mess with the controls to make sure it blends better. So I'm going to turn down the opacity a little bit and that looks good right about there. I just wanted to make it look natural and bring back some of the, you know, the sunset look of the sky. Okay, so our sky looks better, but I want it to be a little bit brighter in this middle area of my photo. So I'm going to grab another adjustment layer. I'm going to make it lighten. I'm going to turn up the shadows just a little bit. And to add some detail, I'm actually going to turn up the structure slider. So let's brush this into the middle area where this island and mountains are. And I'm, I'm not really ever too worried about how big my brush is or the strokes are when I'm doing big things like this, because I can always mess with the controls later to make it seem more natural. So let's turn on the opacity a little bit and maybe turn down the exposure to make it seem blended. And that looks way better like that. So let's hit the backslash key to see our original photo. And yeah, you can see that in just a few adjustments, we have really transformed this pano. So that's how to make an aerial HDR pano in On One Photo Raw 2018. I'm Dylan with On One, and thanks for watching.